What's going on, everybody? Aaron here from Departures Capital, and we're here with Rich TV Live today. How are you today, Rich? I'm doing great. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, and I'm excited to talk about three awesome topics. So we're going to be talking about Afria, Kronos, and then the Farm Bill. So first, we're going to be talking about Afria, and obviously, we know that it was a really volatile week for Afria, and we did close. We did end the week in the green. So I just wanted to get your opinion on the whole thing now that you know it's been a couple of days. The stock's been down a lot. The stock's up. Huge bounce. So where do you think we're headed from here? Well, I think that Afria was under attack all week. And mm -hmm. I know that I got under attack a lot because I talked about it. Um, I think that Afria is going to be fine, which I told everybody. I think that this is only 6% of their business. If they have to pay a fine, they'll pay a fine. If there are people that need to resign or lose their positions, they will. They've already hired a forensic team that's going to go in and determine what's really going on within this transaction. They've had fairness opinions by large legal firms that they are standing behind. So I think they're going to address this and they'll get past it. They're going to go line by line and address these attacks by the short sellers who, remember, are profiting from these short trades so I think that this is just a game. I think Afria will get through it. Like I said previously, it was obviously a tough week. They went down, then they came back up like 50% on Thursday. I believe they were down 8% or 6% on Friday. So I don't believe they're out of the water yet. I think there mm -hmm. is going to still be more volatility. I'm not personally going to buy it. I'm going to sit yeah. on the sidelines. But I believe soon it will hit a bottom and it will rebound aggressively. Yeah, I mean, we could see by that that – the massive bounce that they had a 50, almost 50, well, it was a 51% bounce on the American side. Do you think that that was a lot of short covering and that was why it was such a big bounce or what do you think about that? I don't know. I thought about that and I was like, were the shorts covering on Thursday? Maybe, yeah. uh, maybe it was people just institutions and some large whales thinking this is the time to buy. There's a lot of people involved in this company, you know. I don't think yeah, the sure. company is going to disappear. So, I don't know. I really don't know. I think mm. that there's going to be more short and coming. So, I'm kind of torn between whether it's shorts covering or people are finding the floor. Maybe it was a dead cat bounce. I don't believe that the shorts are finished shorting this. I feel like there's going to be more mm. uh, of an attack. If you look at Kronos Group, CVSI, uh, Namaste, the companies that have been attacked by short sellers, yeah. it has been a continuous attack that took months. But if you look at what happened with Kronos Group, they shorted it down from like $12 in Canada all the way down to four. Mm -hmm. And now they're all the way back to what? They went as high as $18 on Friday before the shorters kind of maybe took it down a little bit or maybe some of the people took their profits. I think yeah. that's $17 in Canada now. Mm -hmm. So if you got in at four, that was the buying opportunity. Afria's presented a few buying opportunities here, and it's one of those companies that I believe is too big to fail. Yeah, for sure. If you look at the long-term charts, I mean, where it did bounce off of five bucks, you know, that was back to like 2016 lows, right? That's so, so that's correct. So that, that, that could be another reason too. But um, anyways, aside from Afria, we've got um, Kronos, where we had a huge investment by Altria, $1.8 billion, and it sent the stock soaring. And we did see the uh, Kronos perform well the entire week. So it was just, people knew that it was, well, I'm, I'm sure some people knew it was gonna happen, or there was some speculation behind it. So what I wanted to ask you was, why do you think that Altria chose Kronos versus all the other uh, cannabis producers? They, they, they obviously had a bunch of choices, so how come Altria chose Kronos and how do you feel about that partnership going forward? It's a good question. I did a lot of research on this and it looks as though yep. they met with each other. They built a relationship and they just kind of hit it off right yeah. away based yeah. on the news. So yep. I think that sometimes that's just, you know, love and first sight match. Made <laughs> uh, they were the first company that, that listed in America on the NASDAQ. Yep. So they've been, you know, kind of around the game a little bit longer than some other people in America specifically. So they may have been a first mover. Mm -hmm. I think it's a strategic partnership. Kronos Group is also a global company. So yep. I think it was, you know, there's only a few that are really global cannabis first movers and Kronos Group happened to be one of them. And we've already seen Cannabis Growth did it. Now Kronos Group has done it. 
And I yep. think Aurora's next. I think Aurora's next. You think Aurora's next to get the partnership? Yeah, I think they will. And hopefully it's Coca-Cola and that will just turn this industry into another bull market. And you can see what happened when Altria made the deal yep. into Kronos Group and it turned the entire cannabis sector into the green. So I believe this will continue. And with some of the news that's going to be coming as early as tomorrow, which we're going to talk about next, I believe that might be a catalyst for a lot of these stocks to come back off these 52 week lows. Yeah, for sure. I mean, that that's what, so it's like, or I feel like Aurora has such a huge fan base, you know, on YouTube, on just everywhere. I feel like Aurora has such a huge fan base and that's what everybody keeps talking about is when, when's Aurora going to get a deal? You know, Aurora is, it's even our favorite stock. I mean, I know you've got a ton of picks, but just like my dad and I, we've always, We've been in Aurora at two bucks. Like that was like the first cannabis stock we ever bought. So it was kind of like just one of those things, right? <laughs> it sticks with you. Although you shouldn't get emotional when it comes to investing, but you'll always have your first like cannabis stock, right? <laughs> it's always been my number one since day one. Since I started this YouTube channel, Aurora's yeah. always been my number one. So, you know, once in a while I'll put other companies in number one spot. I believe last year I did it. Yeah. And it was number one and I was correct. I mean, they were number one. So, yeah. uh, you know, Aurora had a big year too, but it's been an up and down year for Aurora. Like we've Definitely. seen 15 twice. We've seen them go to five twice. Right now they're at 760 in Canada. I think it's a exactly. buy. I think it's a yeah. buy. Yeah. No, me too. I agree with that. So for the last, <clears throat> for the last part of this video, and this could be a really big catalyst, you know, I'd love to hear your opinion on the farm bill passing and how could it really affect the market and spark a big rally or what's going to happen? Yeah, I think that uh, from my research, we will have the farm bill being passed on Monday. Now, there are some people saying that it could be delayed. They could banter back and forth. So this could mm -hmm. even delay until the following week. So let's see exactly when it officially gets passed. But from what I've heard, it'll be passing tomorrow. And if it does, I believe this will be a catalyst. I also believe that cannabis stocks have hit a 52-week low just recently. And I believe we are going to see a resurrection. And I'm going to have a song for you guys about the cannabis stock resurrection, maybe later today. And okay. yeah, I believe we're going to see a resurrection very soon. So stay tuned. The farm bill will be a catalyst for many stocks in the cannabis sector, specifically hemp companies and companies Definitely. in the CBD sector, companies like C-Web, Charlotte's Web, companies mm -hmm. like Cura, companies like TrueLeave, I believe are going to be grossly affected by this in a positive way. I believe Aurora Cannabis will be affected by this in a positive way. So stay tuned. We will be reporting on all the news as it happens. That's exciting. Yeah, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. And I do agree. I think that, you know, the cannabis stocks, you could just feel the waves and waves of selling and then the bounce on Friday. So let's hope for some good news into the future. I guess one, one last thing um, we could talk about real quick is, you know, the stock markets were heavily in the red on Friday, yet the cannabis sector <clears throat> was in the green for the rest of the year, at least. Where do you see the markets going versus the cannabis sector going? Wow, there's a lot of unrest right now on a yeah. global scale. So yeah. I'm really concerned about where the entire global market is going and yeah. maybe going into a recession. I hope we're not, but yeah. you know, it's like a 10 year cycle. So we're around that point. So yeah, I'm a little bit concerned about that. But am I concerned about the cannabis sector? No. I believe the cannabis sector is one of the strongest sectors in the world. This is a new economy. It's a global yep. economy that is becoming legal and is going to continue to be legal. I mean, we heard uh, Aurora Cannabis, I broke the news. They are now in 22 countries. They just opened up Mexico. I mean, yep. everything is opening up. So yeah, I don't see the cannabis sector going through a recession anytime soon. A lot of people are saying, uh, oh, what's going to happen when we get to the point where there's too much supply. Well, let's get to that point first. We're not even close. You know, <laughs> We're not even know, close. We can't even fulfill the need of the customers. So people are like, oh, what's gonna happen when we, we reach our supply? Well, let's yeah. get there first. We're not exactly. even close to that level. 
like the OCS, the Ontario Cannabis Store, cannot meet the demand of the customers. Yep. So let's get there first. You know, people are just ridiculous. You know, they're like, talking, oh, we're running out of, um, we, will we will not run out of supply until we get to the point where we actually have enough supply. Exactly. So let's get to the point where we have enough supply, then we'll worry about oversupply. So I'm already talking, I'm hearing people talk about oversupply. And I'm like, are you for real right now? Oversupply? Undersupply? We're yeah, how about talk about how are we going to fix the undersupply issues first? Correct. So let's get to the point where we have too much product. Yeah. Then we'll worry about too much product. Right now, we no, don't have even close to enough, which is why the illegal sector is flourishing in Canada. No, seriously. Yeah, it's, it's so true. The government can't even shut them down because if they did, there would be no cannabis. Yep. So that's a whole nother problem, another show for another day. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, I mean, I think that that's a, that's a great video that wraps up this video and always value your opinion, Rich. It's nice. We haven't collabed in a week. So I think this was a great video. We touched on three awesome topics and yeah, I look forward to many more shows in the future. Big green week coming up, guys. You heard it here first from your boy, Rich, your boy, Aaron, at Departures Capital. We're out. Peace. Peace. Awesome. I think that was great.